Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back there, Daily Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum and the fear behind the merge. Uh, the major truth behind it and what is actually really kind of scary about it as well in regards to decentralization or centralization. Uh, so with that being said, let's talk about a few things. So for the longest time, I have been talking to you guys about the Ethereum merge. I've been discussing my thoughts on it, why it is actually very bearish. Why do you think that the proof of stake move from Ethereum side is actually a very poor mistake? Um, again, a lot of individuals will argue with me, but hey, it is what it is. To me, I don't think that that was the move. I think that it's actually a bad decision. Um, and I think that's proven itself uh, so far. We're going to be talking about that and discussing that in depth. Um, but, you know, the, the major fear around these two assets, right? Like you look at them and they over, overall, they have roughly almost 60% of market dominance over crypto. And what does that mean? It means that the value held by these two assets alone make up almost 60% of the global crypto market cap, which recently dropped below $1 trillion after uh, the Ethereum merge, which I was expecting it to be a bearish event. And hey, it has turned out to be one. Um, when we look at Bitcoin, it's sitting at about 19.7K, down about 2%. And Ethereum is down almost 10%. And on the seven-day spend, it is down about 13.59%. And even Ethereum itself, if you actually go back a week ago or so, uh, currently it's down about 30% from its highs recently back in August. And from a week ago, uh, we are down about almost 20% exact, uh, which is pretty rough. I mean, it is what it is. Do I think that we are going to see you know, a major price increase? It's hard to say. Um, I'm just excited expecting us to bottom out somewhere within the November time frame because that is the typical bear market time frame. I think that this is probably the last major bearish event around crypto that we had to wait for and really kind of see the after effects of. Uh, but let's actually talk about why I do think that this Ethereum uh, merge was pretty bad. Uh, so first off, we start with the announcement of it. It did get triggered at around 2.43 uh, in the morning. That's when we've seen the full update. And since then, a lot of things have happened. For example, a few you know announcements came out and a few you know articles came out as well from Coindesk, for example. Ethereum already showing signs of increased centralization and yes this is a big issue we're going to be talking about this and discussing it um, but I do want to mention a few things around this so first off a lot of individuals did think that the Ethereum merge was going to be very bullish because you know, we didn't have a lot of updates around it. A lot of people speculated, all right, well, yeah, it's going to, you know, make Ethereum, you know, deflationary, which, you know, technically, yeah, it does. Um, but then a lot of individuals also said, you know, Ethereum itself is going to have lower fees now. It's going to have this, that, whatever. But that was just not the case. The Ethereum merge really didn't unlock much in that aspect. In fact, this is what the merge will not do. Increase network you know, capacity, make fees cheaper, and also improve transaction speeds. Now, when we really kind of look at this, um, you know, what will happen is, you know, wh wh when we see adoption of sharding layer two rollups and even the vertical trees, which you guys do see mentioned here, that's going to be unlocking a lot of the efficiencies that everyone wants to see around Ethereum. But it's probably going to take a lot of time until that is, you know, morphed into reality. Uh, what this does unlock for Ethereum, though, is the sustainability factor around the you know electricity usage within mining and things like that because we even seen Vitalik Buterin announce that it has dropped the global electric or electric electricity sorry usage 0.2% which hey is it a big deal uh not necessarily but hey it is what it is we'll take you know that win over everything else that we have seen in regards to a bearish standard so let's actually jump into this and let's talk about it so first off in hours following the merge just two platforms added over 40 percent of the network's blocks now why is this a big deal why is centralization a big deal so first off you know within crypto you know, you don't want any of these networks or any of these projects to be centralized. You don't want, you know, entities holding well over 50% or so of, you know, the supply, the network's blocks, whatever the case may be. And this is the big issue around Ethereum because if Ethereum is centralized, I mean, this is, you know, a project that does hold over 20% almost of market dominance. But I've also mentioned Bitcoin is centralized. We're going to be talking about that in this video as well. Um, but if we do scroll down, we do see a little bit of an update down here, you know, out of the last 1000 blocks, 420 have been, you know, built by just Lido and Coinbase. And we even do see down here like Lido, a, a kind of community led staking collective and Coinbase, the world's third largest crypto exchange, own 27.5 and 14.5% of the network stake, respectfully. 
And then, uh, you know, down here, we do see a few other discussions around, you know, validator centralization and how it is a big issue. And it 100% is. And uh, also, we do see down here, like, so much money going to so few services has sparked concerns. If a single entity controls more than 66% of the network staked Ether, you know, it will be able to make it more difficult for others to write transactions to Ethereum's ledger. And yes, this is a big issue. I mean, like, when you actually look at centralization, it is a very dangerous, you know, topic but it is also a very dangerous thing to have uh, when you have a network like Ethereum that is, you know, as, um, as, as substantial as it is uh, within crypto. Um, but when we really kind of look at Ethereum currently and when we really kind of look at things happening around this market, you know, a lot of individuals in the Bitcoin community have talked down on Ethereum and actually said that Ethereum is complete garbage because of this major update. And I just want you guys to also understand that, you know, Bitcoin is not, you know, this goody two shoes when it comes to centralization or decentralization. We're going to get into that in a second, um, but I do just want to go over a few things. So first off over here from uh, sentiment, you know, according to our Ethereum post merge inflation dashboard, 46.15% of the proof of stake nodes uh, for storing data processing transactions and adding new blockchain blocks can be attributed to just two ad uh, addresses. This heavy dominance by these addresses is something to watch. And I do completely agree. I think that it is. And again, another major, you know, announcement was from Martin, who was the one that we were talking about in this um, article, where he was talking about the top seven entities controlling two thirds of the stake is pretty disappointing to see, to be honest. And, you know, here you guys do um, have uh, Lido and Coinbase respectfully. And uh, this is pretty rough to be completely honest with you guys. Um, but also, yeah, he even does mention Bitcoin. And no, dear Bitcoin fans, it is not better in Bitcoin. In fact, you only... You know, the sorry, you need only four entities to come to about 72%. And yes, this is the big deal. Like if you actually look around Bitcoin and Ethereum, there is a ton of issues within these two projects. Uh, we've talked about these in, you know, past videos as well. You know, this is not me being bearish on Bitcoin or Ethereum. I just think that currently we do have a centralization issue within crypto. I think that a lot of these major networks and a lot of these major projects, you know, have come to the idea of like, all right, yeah, they're fully decentralized, even though on the back burner, these are holding a very, you know, significant percentage um, of the tokens. And even if we go over here, you know, we have been seeing a lot of regulatory discussions around Ethereum as well, which could, you know, accommodate for some of the negative price action. For an example, we do see our SEC chair says system used by Ethereum following software update could trigger securities laws literally published on, you know, day one of the fork slash merge. I have been saying this for over six years that POW to POS transitions can draw regulatory attention. And yes, I do completely agree with that. I think that this is going to be a pretty bad uh, situation. We do see down here, like to be clear, I'm not saying that Ethereum is necessarily a security because of its proof model. And I don't think that it is. And I actually don't wish any sort of regulatory harm on Ethereum or, you know, even Ethereum holders. Um, but this could be a big deal. And we do see down here, like, but Regulators do talk about staking in the context of dividends, which if one feature of what securities laws call a common enterprise, there are more factors in the Howey test too. I believe that more dis uh, discourse is necessary among regulators in the US, SEC, CFTC, OCC, and market participants to determine and build a fair, objective, and sustainable framework for token categorization and market structure that's necessary to operate businesses in the space. I believe that computer programs that are not used to raise money or promise dividends should not be categorized as a security tokens and small businesses need a lighter and cheaper regulatory regime so that they can register the current system is complex and cost prohibitive and uh, we do see down here like never forget that Gensler called out both xrp as well as the you know ethereum for likely being non-compliant securities back in 2018 meaning he's most likely not on the side of ethereum free pass no he is not and uh i do just want you guys to understand that if ethereum does get targeted next it is going to cascade into a massive issue around this market now let's actually talk about bitcoin let's actually talk about the centralization of bitcoin so for the longest time you know a lot of individuals in the space thought that bitcoin was probably one of the most you know decentralized aspects of uh you know crypto you know, they thought that this was, you know, the big deal, the, you know, thing that kind of sets everyone free. It was the freedom token, whatever, for the longest time. But the issue here is that when you look at the holding amounts and you look at the coin amounts in regards to percentage, you can actually see that um, when you when you actually look at some of these major projects, uh, not projects, um, the token addresses down here. You can see the number of, uh, of addresses total. You can see the coins, the U.S. dollar amount, and also the percentage of coins. For example, down here, 
you know, balance of 100,000 to 1 million Bitcoin. There's only five addresses that hold this amount and it's about 4% of the total supply. That's not bad at all. But then you go and look at the 92 addresses that hold 10,000 to 100,000 and combining these two down here, this is about 15.48%, which again is not too bad. But then you look at the next one, which is 1,000 to 10,000 Bitcoin, and there's only 2,044 addresses holding this amount, which make up 41.15% um, combined of these bottom three. And last but not least, 13,793 holding 100 to 1,000 Bitcoin make up a total of 20.24% and a total combined 61.39%. This is a concern because that's less than 16,000 addresses out of 40 million addresses around Bitcoin. And, you know, this is 16,000 individual holders. Now, is that a substantial amount? No, not necessarily, but it is a big enough, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, other major networks, right? You won't see statistics like this in regards to how much, you know, specific holders hold. I mean, you can look at all of these. You can look at Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dogecoin, Dash, all of these. You know, none of them are nearly as close to the amount of tokens being held by just the bottom four brackets of the addresses. Does this make it entirely, you know, decentralized or centralized though? No, not necessarily. What actually makes Bitcoin centralized is the hash rate uh, holders. For example, back two years ago, two Chinese companies were controlling 52% of Bitcoin's hash rate and it leaves the decentralization in question. This was a report from uh, Bitcoinist. And since then, we did see a few updates. You know, we've we seen the hash rate change dramatically, um, but it is still a big issue. In fact, you know, just five names out of here, you know, Antpool, F2Pool, Via Bitcoin, Poolin, and even Slushpool hold over 50% of the total hash rate. And two names on here, F2Pool and Antpool, hold a very substantial name in regard, or, um, a substantial amount in regards to hash rate distribution. And this is just from two names alone. This is what makes Bitcoin centralized is the entities holding the hash rate power because these are the largest mining pools around Bitcoin. And again, when you have names holding such a large portion of the mining pool, um, you know, hash rate power, it's kind of the same exact way of POS having these individuals hold a substantial amount in regards to POS mechanisms. This is a big issue. This is a problem. Um, is it going to cause crypto to fail, you know, massively or anything like, no, not necessarily. I'm just trying to say that when you look at the truth behind these two tokens, these two dominant tokens that are giants within the space, the number one and number two holding um, within CMC, holding well over almost 50% plus dominance in regards to crypto. This is a big issue. And it does leave the question, is crypto centralized? Is crypto decentralized? From, you know, a broad perspective, I would argue that, you know, crypto for the most part is not centralized. And, you know, I, I do look at some of these other tokens. A lot of people will ask me like, well, do you think that XRP is centralized? Do you think that this is centralized? That's central. It's hard to say for sure. Um, you just have to look at the amount of tokens being held by specific wallets. I mean, you know, you won't really see that a lot on some of these tokens. You can kind of see it on a few. Um, but for the most part, I would argue that Bitcoin and Ethereum are extremely centralized from the perspective of, you know, the statistics that we have in front of us. Um, you look at Bitcoin, right? And like I said, you know, it's 16, less than 16,000 addresses in regards to the holders tab. And by the way, if you actually look at this, I know that this like kind of sometimes messes up. Um, but there was over 43.1 million holding addresses of Bitcoin. You kind of compare that to, you know, the 16,000 that do hold over 61% of the total supply of Bitcoin. You know, that's a very large difference there. It's a huge difference. And this is why I say, you know, when you actually look at the addresses that are richer than, for example, like 10 million, you have 4,250 compared to all of these other, you know, addresses. Does this, uh, you know, essentially make it, 
you know, fully centralized, not necessarily, um, but it does argue the fact that like 61% of the supply is held by just four categories of the holders tab and it's 16,000 or less than 16,000 individuals that are holding that amount of tokens and then combine this with the hash rate distribution of these major, you know, names here, it kind of makes the network look, you know, centralized. Again, a lot of individuals will argue over this. It's totally fine. I completely understand that everyone has their own opinions and I do respect everyone's opinion on this subject. But with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As it's up to you all, have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.